Howdy, howdy, this is Mr. Potter. What we're going to do today is we're going to talk about how to shuffle things. Uh, we're first going to talk about shuffling a list of numbers, and then we'll go back to the card and deck that we worked on last time, and we'll talk about how to shuffle it as well. So, first thing I want to talk about is the idea of shuffling. Keep in mind, the purpose of shuffling is to make sure that we don't have the exact same identical sequence of cards every single time. Uh, you may recall when we ran our deck tester last time, we noticed that all of the cards that we got were in the exact same order. So notice that we had the Ten of Diamonds, Nine of Diamonds, Eight of Diamonds, Seven of Diamonds, and so forth throughout this deck. And the first three cards we had that were drawn were the King, Queen, and Jack of Diamonds. And if I run this program again, I'm going to get the exact same sequence of cards being drawn. So shuffling is necessary um, just to make sure that we don't have every single game being replicated. We're not going to have the same effect every single time. So in our Activity 3 folder, there's this file called Shuffler. And we're going to take a look at this Shuffler and first see what the main is doing here. And then we'll talk about a couple of different ways that we have to shuffle cards. So we've got Public Class Shuffler here. Uh, we've got a Shuffle Count 1 and we've got Value Count 4. And we're going to tweak these values in a little bit to see what actually is happening here. These are just uh, static ints that we're dealing with, some, some constants that we're dealing with. So our main method is actually going to test some of the shuffling methods that we're going to come up with here. So I've got to create an array of values, and we're just going to assign them. So in this case, since value count is 4, I'm going to have a 4-element array, and the arrays are going to be the numbers from 0 to 3. And then we're going to go ahead and shuffle a certain number of times. We're going to do what we call the perfect shuffle. Uh, the idea by a perfect shuffle is that I'm going to take a deck of cards break it exactly in half, and I'm going to interleave the cards. So the bottom card on the left stack goes right underneath the bottom card of the right stack, which goes right underneath the second from the bottom on the left stack, and the cards are interleaved perfectly. Um, we're going to see if there's actually an issue with that when we start talking about our particular deck situation, but I want to talk about how would we implement that if that's what we were interested in, and then we're also going to implement uh, what we're going to call a selection shuffle. Uh, very similar to the selection sort that we were doing there, except the elements that we're choosing are elements at random rather than elements in order. So we're going to have an array of values which are going to be in consecutive order. Uh, we're going to shuffle them a certain number of times using our perfect shuffle and then we're going to print out the results of this. And then we're going to go ahead and try it using the efficient shuffling technique. So the same idea, create the same consecutive integer arrays. And we're just doing integers just to show what's happening here. So the idea by a perfect shuffle is that I'm going to have to divide this list in half. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create a temporary array of this. So I'm going to say uh, int array temp gets new int array of size values dot length just so I can have all those uh, things in here and then I'm going to go ahead and take elements from values and assign them to our list here so I'm gonna say int start left which is going to start at 0 and int start right is going to start at values dot length divided by 2. So in other words, I'm going to basically cut my deck in half. So if I had 12 cards in here, cards 0 through 5 are going to be in the left half, and cards 6 through 11 are going to be in the right half. And then I'm going to go through a loop here. So 4 int i gets 0, i is less than values dot length divided by 2, i plus plus and I'm going to do the following. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say that temp sub i is going to get um, the element in the beginning of the list which is uh, start left. So I'm going to say values sub start left and temp sub i plus one is going to get values at start left so actually at start right and then I'm going to want to uh, have start left plus plus and start 
write plus plus. So you can see one issue that I'm going to have is that if I'm going to interleave this the first, first time through I'm going to want position 0 and 1 filled. The next time I'm going to want positions 2 and 3 filled. So I don't want this divided by 2. I actually want to go through the entire length and I want to make sure that i is increasing by 2 each time. So i plus gets 2. And so what this is going to do is it's going to basically two at a time fill in something from the left stack and something from the right stack. And then I want to go ahead and copy all of those elements back to my values array. So uh, for int i gets zero, i is less than values dot length, i plus plus, and we're just going to say values sub i gets temp sub i. Just to copy those things back in order. So we're going to go in and compile this, make sure we don't have any really bad errors. That works fine. We're going to run this. And remember, the first time we're running this, it's going to shuffle this uh, once. So here's our perfect shuffle. Remember, our original deck was 0, 1, 2, 3. So if I cut my deck in half, 0 and 1 are going to be in the left half. 2 and 3 are going to be in the right half. And it interleaves the 0 and the 2, and then the 1 and the 3. We'll see this a little bit better if I go up here and I actually change this to uh, 52. Uh, because there's going to be 52 elements in our array. If I run this again, then I'm going to see 0 and 26, 1 and 27, 2 and 28, 3 and 29, 4 and 30, 5 and 31, and so forth. And this interleaving actually, you know, it, since it's perfect, I'm always going to have that same gap between consecutive values. The problem is, you know, if, if I want to shuffle this again, let's bump this up to shuffle count 2 and I run this. It's going to shuffle it and then shuffle it again. There's my first shuffle. Then I've got 0, 13, 26, 39, 1, 14, 27, 42, 15, 28, 41, 3, 16, 29, 42. And I think you may see an issue here with this second shuffle because if we're dealing with two, I mean, if we're dealing with four soots like hearts, clubs, diamonds, spades, 0, 13, 26, and 39 should all represent the same rank just in consecutive suits. And that's a problem. And if I bump this up to 5, it may give me the illusion of having a relatively uh, sorted, I mean unsorted array. I've got 0, 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48. I've got this periodicity to it, this, this sameness to it. If I actually take this up to 7, something interesting happens. If I take it up to 7, notice I've got 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, so forth. Then I've got the 1, 3, 5, 7. I'm going to bump this up one more time. And what you're going to see is on this last sort here, all of my cards are in the exact same order that I started. So obviously there's a problem with the perfect shuffle and the fact is that it's perfect. The thing is, I'm always going to have exactly the correct interleaving, and so it's going to give me some issues that my deck results are going to be reproducible. It's not going to be completely random. And the only reason that this shuffling technique works in real life is the fact that humans are imperfect. The fact that when I divide the deck in half, I'm technically not necessarily dividing it exactly in half. And when I do the interleaving, sometimes two cards will slip in on one side, or three cards may slip it on the other side. Again, because my fingers may not be gripping the cards perfectly and I'm not going to be able to choose one card at a time from either side. This technique causes issues. So this is not going to work the way that I want. This idea of a perfect shuffle, this perfect interleaving, the standard way that we shuffle, and that's just because computers are too good. What we need to do is we need to come up with some other technique of shuffling, something that's a little bit more random to it. Notice in the shuffling technique that we used up here, there was no randomness to it. We never used any random numbers up here. And because of that, my results are reproducible. I can always reproduce the results. And I want to do something that's very random down here. So this is the idea of the selection shuffle. So I want to talk about what I'm going to be doing up here. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be starting with all 51 cards and I'm going to choose a random card and put it at the end of my list. 
And then with those remaining 50 cards, I'm going to choose a random card and put it right next to that card. And then with the 49 remaining cards, I'm going to choose a random card and put it. So what's happening is starting at position 51, 50, 49, 48, I'm going to be taking those cards randomly and sorting them at the end of the deck so that I should have a relatively random set of values. So let's go ahead and talk about how we're going to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a loop. So for int i gets values dot length i greater than zero i minus minus and I actually want to make sure I start at values of length minus one because I'm talking about the index of an array here. And I'm going to do uh, the following. I'm going to say that int uh, position gets and I'm going to get a random number from zero to k. So I'm going to do math.random and I'm going to multiply by k and of course I need this to be an index in my array so I'm going to need to cast this as an int. So this is going to give me some random number from 0 to k. Why am I calling it k? It should be 0 to i. And then what I want to do is I want to do a swap. So int uh, temp gets values sub pause. And values sub pause is going to get values sub i. And then values sub i is going to get temp. And I'm going to do this starting at the very end of my deck and randomly determining the card from position 51 all the way down to position 0. And so this more efficient card shuffle, uh, let me go ahead and change these values back, back to instead of uh, 8 count, I'm going to go ahead and make this a 1 count. And this time I don't want to look at the perfect shuffle. The, but I want to take a look at this here. I've got 43, 15, 51, 31, 33, 24, 9, 2, 7, 14, 35, 38. I've got a pretty good selection of random numbers. If I run it again, notice I've got 51, 9, 19. I'm going to have another very good selection of random numbers here. And if I go ahead and bump this up to 8, remember the 8 caused a problem with us. 8 allowed us to completely regenerate the deck to its original order when I use the perfect shuffle. But now if I'm doing this random shuffle, I'm shuffling and shuffling and shuffling and shuffling. I've got a pretty smooth distribution here that, you know, these numbers are completely out of order. I've got two cards here that just by coincidence are in order, 30 and 31, but none of the other ones really appear to be in order. This seems like a really efficient algorithm. And this idea should be pretty easy to implement. Even notice that this code that I've got here for the selections shuffle is shorter than what I had for my perfect shuffle up here. So what I want to do is I actually want to implement this idea into my deck class. Remember that in our deck class that we were dealing with, we said we were going to leave this for later. We're, we're taking care of it now. So recall that my shuffle... When I'm looking at a deck, my deck actually has an array list of cards. So I'm not going to be able to deal with those elements uh, as we had before. I actually have to deal with this from an array list standpoint. So let me go ahead and copy what I've got here, but I'm going to go ahead and make this a comment because I really don't want to use this exact code. I want to use something similar to it. So I'm going to paste this in here. Uh, there's my comment. And so I want to talk about how to implement this. So I've got this for loop. For int i gets value sub length minus 1, i greater than 0, i minus minus. So I probably still want to have that for loop. So for int i gets, and this is going to be cards dot size minus 1. i is greater than 0, i minus minus. And then what I want to do is I actually want to get the random number. So int pause int pause gets, and I'm going to cast as an int, uh, math.random times i. And then I'm going to get the card at that random position. So card c gets cards dot remove pause. Now keep in mind, when I do cards dot remove pause, I'm actually removing it from my 
list. So that means the size of my list has been diminished. But then what I can do is I can add this back because I really want to put this in position I. So I want to do cards dot add and this is going to be at position I card C. So I don't need the idea of a of a temp really. My, I mean technically card C is the temp. I'm just storing it here. But I'm not really doing a swap. What I'm doing is I'm taking it out of the list and I'm putting it back in the list. And so if you could imagine this is if I had a deck of cards in here. I pull the card off the off somewhere in the middle of the deck and put it on the top. Pull it out of the middle and put it on top. Pull it out of the middle and put it on top. That's essentially what I'm doing here. So let's say I wanted to see what this looked like. Now whenever I create a deck in my constructor I really should put some reference to, you know, once I've created this deck let's go ahead and shuffle it. So let's see what happens when I do this. So I'm going to go ahead and compile this. This should compile without errors. Except it didn't. Let's figure out why. Probably some silly mistakes. Um, illegal start of type on line 81. So let's jump down to 81. Did I just put this in the wrong spot? I did. That's in size. Oh, did I lose the method header completely? My goodness. So, public void shuffle. So let me go ahead and make that the comment, and then my method will actually start here. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this comment that I had, because I really don't need it. Can we compile it now? Is that better? That looks better. Now, if we run our deck tester, we should see a shuffled deck. So let's scroll back up here and see what's happening. Let's scroll up to the top. Queen of Spades, Two of Clubs, Seven of Spades, Six of Hearts, Ace of Clubs, Three of Clubs, Seven of Hearts, Jack of Clubs, Five of Hearts, Nine of Spades. It looks pretty randomized. And I draw the first three cards. I've got the Queen of Spades, the Two of Clubs, the Seven of Spades. If I run this again, here I've got the Two of Clubs, the Five of Spades, the Eight of Diamonds. It looks like a pretty random deck up here. I know it looks like I've got a lot of repeating, like I see like clubs, 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 hearts, hearts, but whenever I have a shuffled deck, this is what's going to happen. And one of the things that we notice from our shuffler uh, output, let me go ahead and run this again real quick, is that shuffling once or shuffling eight times really doesn't make a difference. I'm going to get a nice random distribution of these numbers. So it's okay that our deck class up here is in our constructor we're only shuffling once. It's it's not going to make a difference if I want to shuffle once or if I shuffle eight times. It's really not going to make that much of a difference. So this is going to allow us to deal with um, our deck. It's going to shuffle it out pretty well and I think that's a pretty good start. So let's go ahead and recap what we did with our shuffle. We're basically going through a loop starting at cards.size minus one starting at the very end. We're finding a random card in our list, we're removing it from that position, and then we're uh, just tacking it on at the end. And of course the idea is that once I get to those, th once, I've, once I've taken off 51 cards, I only want to look at the first 50 cards that I haven't touched because those need to be randomized. Once I've gone through the first 26 cards, I only want to look at the remaining 26 and take from those. That's why we're counting down from I gets cards dot size minus 1 down to 0, and our, our random position that we're selecting from, the one that we're removing from the list, is actually at that random position times i. So if I only have five cards left that aren't shuffling, I'm only choosing from those five cards. And that's one of the ways that an array list is actually a little bit easier to implement this in than the arrays that we were talking about in our shuffler method. So, looks like we've got a pretty good deck here, a deck of nice cards. Should be able to run this pretty nicely. It does look like it's fairly randomized. The three of spades, the eight of clubs, and the three of hearts. Got some good card playing going on, so hopefully we'll be able to, to get this card game going a little bit smoother. So once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.